Today we're going to continue our factoring discussion. Specifically, what we're going to look to factor are terms that are in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. However, all of our terms today will have an a value equaling 1. Now what I've done for you is I've listed some binomial products to the left and they're multiplied FOIL terms to the right. And what I'd like you to do is take a minute to look at the relationship between the numbers in the binomials and their products and the specific numbers in the multiplications. You'll notice that I have a positive 6 and a positive 2 here, followed by, once they're multiplied out, an 8 and a positive 12 here. I have a negative 5 and a positive 8, followed by a positive 3 and a negative 40, positive 4, negative 9, followed by negative 5 and negative 36, and finally negative 3 and a negative 7, followed by a negative 10 and a positive 21. So what is that pattern? Well, if you look closely, you'll notice that the C term, or the constant term, in this case, is the product of the two terms in the factored term. You'll see that this middle term, or the coefficient in front of x, we call it the b term, is the sum of the two numbers in the factored term. In each of these, you'll always lead with an x and an x because that's the only way you're going to get a FOIL of an x squared to begin with. So this is going to be exactly what we're going to look to factor these terms into. They're going to start as a trinomial, and we're going to break it up into two binomials such that we lead with two x's, and then the relationship between the two terms in the trinomial is going to be we're finding two numbers such that they multiply to the constant term and add to what we call the middle term or the B term. So let's do a series of problems. We're going to factor each of these trinomials into two binomials such that our leading term is X. And now we're going to look for two terms that multiply to 5 and add to 6. Now, there's only two terms that multiply to 5, and that's 5 and 1. And the question is, do 5 and 1 add to 6? The answer is yes. I need a positive 5, and the only way to get a positive 5 is to have two positives or two negatives. Since I have a positive middle term, I must have two positives. When I FOIL this out, I get x squared plus 5x plus 1x plus 5, which is x squared, plus 6x, plus 5. You should never miss any of these factorings because you can always multiply it back out and check. Let's do the next problem. I'm looking for two terms that multiply to 9 and add to 6. I lead with my two x's. Two terms that multiply to 9. Well, I've got a couple of choices. I've got 1 and 9. And I have 3 and 3. Now the only one of these that add to 6 is the 3 and 3. So I'm going to guess I need a 3 and a 3. The only way to get a positive 9 is either two positives or two negatives. Since I need a positive 6, I'm going to go with two positives. If I FOIL that out, I get x squared plus 3x, plus 9. If I FOIL this out, I get x squared, plus 3x, plus 3x, plus 9, or x squared, plus 6x, plus 9, which was the intended trinomial to get back. 
Let's continue. These are going to be a little bit more difficult now. I need two terms such that they multiply to 15, add to negative 8. Well, what multiplies to 15? I've got 15 and 1, and I've got 3 and 5. The only one of these that stand a chance of getting an 8 are 3 and 5. And the only way to get a negative 8 from 3 and 5 is to have two negatives. So I lead with my x's. I get a 5 and a 3. And I need the negative 8, so they must be both negative. Therefore, I have x squared minus 5x minus 3x plus 15, which is x squared minus 8x plus 15. Done. Next, I need to find two terms that multiply to 30, add to 1, and you'll notice the multiplication to 30 has to be a negative. The addition has to be a positive 1. So what multiplies to 30? Well, I can list those numbers out. I can say I've got 30 and 1, I've got 2 and 15, I've got 3 and 10, and I've got 6 and 5. Now, if you see the answer right off, you don't have to go ahead and list all these multiplications out. You can simply just take and, and write the answer down if you know it. But this tends to help. Well, I'm looking for one of these combinations to somehow add or subtract to 1. There's no way I'm going to get a 1 out of a 1 and 30, or a 2 and 15, or a 3 and 10. However, I notice that if I take the 6 and the 5 and make the 6 positive and the 5 negative, I add the 1. So I'm going to say, well, then that's x plus 6 and x minus 5. In foiling that, I get x squared plus 6x plus, whoops, negative 5x, cheated a little bit there, minus 30. 6x, negative 5x is x. And there's my trinomial. So my factoring, once again, is x plus 6 times x minus 5. Let's go ahead and do one more. Find out what multiplies to negative 24. Adds to negative 10. Again, I'm just going to list all the possible multiples. That's pretty much all I'll have to get 24. I need to find out once again those are all my products to get 24. So I need to find out once again which one of these combinations will get me a 10. Well, 1 and 24 won't. 3 and 8 won't. But I know 2 and 12 might and 4 and 6 might get me 10. I've just got to figure out how to do that. Well, to get negative 10 out of this combination, I would need a positive 2 and a negative 12. To get a negative 10 out of this combination, I need a negative 4 and a negative 6. Now, the other aspect of this problem is I need to multiply to negative 24. These two multiply to positive 24. Therefore, these will not be part of my solution. So that leaves me with the positive 2 and the negative 12. And in this case, they multiply to negative 24. So I'm going to say this is going to be x minus 12 times x plus 2. And I can FOIL this out to check it once again. And I notice I have x squared plus 2x minus 12x minus 24 which gives me x squared minus 10x minus 24, which is exactly what I wanted. 
So that's factored. Now, the problem asks me specifically to take and solve for x. So I know, let's go back, that if this was factored to x minus 12 and x plus 2, we can now use our zero product principle to solve this. This acts like my a term, and this acts like my b term. So if I know that two terms multiply to equal zero, then one of those two must equal zero. And these are both pretty easy to solve. I add 12 to both sides here, and subtract 2 to both sides here, getting x equals 12 or x equals negative 2. And again, you can check both of these if you'd like. It's really easy to plug into our factor form and check that they multiply to equal 0, but you probably want to go back into your original, at least for one of them. So let's, let's plug a negative 2 back into my original. I get negative 2 quantity squared minus 10 times negative 2 minus 24, and that should equal 0. I have 4 plus 20 minus 24, and sure enough, that equals 0. So it checks out. Here's another solve for x problem, except in this problem, I don't have a side set equal to 0. And any time we have a squared term, in our problem, at this point, we want to take and turn it into a trinomial set equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 20x from both sides. And there are no like terms, so what I'm left with is x squared minus 20x plus 36 is equal to 0. Now, in this case, I want to try to factor this trinomial. I need to find out what multiplies to 36 adds to negative 20. So let's get our multiples to 36. 36 and 1, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6. And I want to get a negative 20 by adding or subtracting. 1 and 36 is not going to do that for us. Here's a possibility of 2 and 18. 3 and 12 aren't going to do that, 9 and 4 aren't, 6 and 6 aren't. So it looks like 2 and 18 are my only options, and I need a negative 20, which means both need to be negative. So I'm going to multiply x minus 2 times x minus 18 and set that equal to 0. Again, our zero product principle says that x minus 2 must equal 0 or x minus 18 must equal 0. Add 2 to both sides. Get x equals 2. And add 18 to both sides. Get x equals 18. So once again, the big deal in this problem is when solving any kind of what we call a quadratic set of equations, we want to set things equal to zero, factor, and then use the zero product principle. Let's take a look at a word problem. And this person wants to build an art studio that's three times the area of the old studio by increasing the length and width by the same amount. So what are the new dimensions of the studio? Well, we know the new dimensions, if you look, are this long by this wide. So that will give us an area. Your original area is 10 by 12, or 120. The new area is three times that. 
So that's going to be 360. Now we, we can write an equation for our area of the new building. The new building is length by length times width, and you'll see that one length is x plus 12. The width is x plus 10, and that should equal my area of 360. And we want to solve this. Now, it looks like this is set up in that factored zero product principle. However, 360 is not equal to zero. Therefore, I can't say x plus 12 is equal to 360 and x plus 10 is equal to 360. In fact, I have to multiply these binomials out. So I get x squared plus 12x plus 10x plus 120 is equal to 360. Add like terms, I get x squared plus 22x. I'm going to subtract 360 from both sides. And I believe I get 240 is equal to 0. Now you'll notice I have an ax squared plus bx plus c term set equal to 0. If I want to solve this using the zero product principle, I need to find out what multiplies to 240 and adds to 22. Well, this is where you probably ought to get your calculator out. And the way I approach this problem is I try to find out, well, what are some things that multiply to 240? Well, I know right off the bat, if I see 240, then I know So the way I approach this is I want to find out a couple of things that multiply to 240. When I see a zero at the end of any kind of number, I know 10 goes into that number. So my first guess would probably be 10 and 24. The problem is with 10 and 24, I don't make 22 by adding. So I know that that's not going to work. Now what else goes into 24? Well, One of the things I think of is 12 because 12 goes into 24. So therefore, I take 240, divide that by 12, and see what I get. It's really kind of guess and check. And I get 12 and 20. So I have 12 and 20. And 12 and 20 is not going to get me any form of 22 either. So I know that's not going to work. So then the next thing I think of is what else goes into 24? Well, I know 8 goes into 24. Let's try 8. So I divide 240 by 8, and I get 30. And I look and I say I've got an 8 and a 30. Can I get 22 from that? Well, this looks like a good prospect because I know that in this case I have a positive 30 and a negative 8, I get a positive 22. So if I take x minus 8 and x plus 30, I'm going to get my 240 and add to my 22. Now I can use my zero product principle and say x minus 8 equals 0 and x plus 30 is equal to 0. Add 8 to both sides. Get x equals 8. Subtract 30 to both sides. Oops. Get x equals negative 30. Now only one of these would make sense as an answer. Because we're talking about the sides of a studio or a dimension, the negative number makes absolutely no sense. So really, my answer is 8 as far as my new lengths go. So therefore I know my new dimensions are 10 plus 8 or 18 and 
12 plus 8 or 20. And that should multiply together to get 360 and it does. So things are becoming a little more difficult. As you can see, this type of factoring involves a lot of guess and check work. And you're just going to have to be patient. You'll have a calculator for this whenever I ask you to do it. So just keep working at it, and I think you'll get stronger and stronger as the days go by. Make sure you write your lesson summary and answer the questions below. See you tomorrow.